Hello, my name is Kanika Singh and I work as R&D scientist at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I appreciate you all being here for this webinar. Today, I'm going to talk about efficient culturing of human mesenchymal stromal cells for cell therapy research. In this webinar, you will learn the basics of cell therapy and mesenchymal stromal cells. I will introduce you to two specialized surfaces to culture MSCs for cell therapy research. So there are three pillars of therapeutics. The first one consists of small molecules. Small molecules are extracted or synthesized chemical compounds which are used in traditional drugs. And examples are aspirin, penicillin, etc. The second pillar consists of biologics. A biopharmaceutical, also known as biologics, are nothing but the drug products manufactured in extracted form or semi-synthesized from biological sources. They typically have biological functions and examples are monoclonal antibodies, proteins and peptides like insulin, and nucleic acids, which includes DNA and RNA vaccines. The third and final pillar is cell and gene therapy. So cell therapy utilizes living cells from the patient or a donor for treatment. And this complex technology is quickly evolving and offers hope for many who often have no other treatment option. So what exactly is cell therapy? With living cells from the patient or a donor, cell therapy replaces damaged or diseased cells or stimulates the body's immune response or regeneration. It can also serve as a delivery vehicle for genetics and molecular therapies to the targets. As you can see on the right, there are different types of cells used for cell therapy. The first one is differentiated adult cells, which are isolated directly from human tissue. The next is immune cells, example for which are CAR T cells, which are a major segment of immune therapy these days, and NK cells. And finally, stem cells, which includes hematopoietic stem cells, neural stem cells, induced pluripotent stem cells, and mesenchymal stromal cells, etc. And today we are going to talk about mesenchymal stromal cells. What are MSCs? So MSCs are multipotent stem cells that can self-renew and differentiate into many cell types. These cells can be easily isolated from numerous sources and are relatively easy to culture in vitro. So as per the guidelines of International Society for Cell and Gene Therapy, mesenchymal stromal cells or MSCs, they have a fibroblast-like morphology. These cells can be grown on tissue culture treated surface and are adherent in nature. They express certain CD markers like CD105, CD73 and CD90 and do not have certain markers like CD45, 34, HLA-DR, etc. on their surface. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, they have a potential to differentiate into multiple lineages like osteoblasts, adipocytes, and chondroblasts. Now that we have understood or we have defined what MSCs are, let's understand why human mesenchymal stromal cells are used for therapeutic applications. So human uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, they have regenerative properties. So they home to the site of damaged tissue and facilitate its repair. They have a paracrine signaling effect to stimulate 
to tissue specific stem cell renewal, angiogenesis, fibrosis, and apoptosis. These cells also demonstrate immunomodulatory effects. So by direct contact or by the secretion of several factors, they modulate the function of immune effector cells, such as T cells. Now that we have understood what MSCs are and why do we use MSCs for therapeutic application, let's take a look on statistical data present for MSC clinical research. So overall, MSCs have been used for at least a decade in clinical trials, and there has been around 1,000 MSC trials focusing on several disease indications. There is still some skepticism in the field using MSCs as a therapeutic option because of the small sampling size or statistical insignificance. And due to this reason, many MSC clinical trials do not make it past early phase into commercialization. However, there is a general consensus on safety while administrating MSCs because they lack HLA-DR expression and are suitable for allogenic therapy. And as you can see in the graph, for GVHD and musculoskeletal diseases where there are no available treatment, MSCs have shown a positive impact. So with this data, it is pretty clear that MSCs have been used in like in an accelerating manner have been used in translation research. And it is very important to provide precise culture condition for their growth and proliferation. Now, to talk about the growth and proliferation of human mesenchymal stromal cells, we know that there are two possible ways to culture your MSCs in vitro. Firstly, for growing your cells, either you can use media containing serum to grow your MSCs, or you can seed your cells on an ECM coated surface and you can use a media which does not contain FPS. Now, as we know that animal origin serum carries a risk of zoonotic transmission and it could promote chronic inflammation. And sometimes when we use ECM in our culture for coating the surfaces, it also could carry a risk of unwanted immune response. So in order for your MSCs for translation into clinical research purpose, it is ideal to avoid the usage of serum and ECM in the culture. So we all know that there are many delivery methods available for MSC therapy. The first and the simplest and the most inexpensive method is to treat patients by injecting isolated MSCs. The second one is using biological scaffolds, which includes the transplantation of cells to the disease site using biodegradable materials. And the final approach is scaffold-free systems. As I already mentioned, that the presence of serum and ECM in culture has potential risks associated with it. And it is important to culture MSCs in a risk-free environment if we want to translate them for cell therapy research. So to cater this requirement, Thermo Fisher offers a specialized surface called Nunclon Supra surface. So this surface is a high attachment surface, which is plasma treated, which allows the support, which allows and support the growth of MSCs in the absence of any ECM coating. And we can use serum free and xeno free media for growing our cells. Now I'll take you through a set of experiments we did in order to showcase the usage of Nunclon Supra surface for culturing different MSCs. So we have used three different types of MSCs for the experiment. The first one is adipose tissue derived ADSCs. The second is Wharton jelly MSCs or WJ MSCs. 
and the third one is bone marrow derived MSCs. So these three cell types have been cultured on three different surfaces. The first surface is Nunclon Delta surface, which is not coated with any ECM. So to clarify, Nunclon Delta is the regular uh, plastic surface you use in your lab to grow your cells. And the cell start is the ECM coating, which we are going to talk about. So the first surface we took, we did not coat it with any ECM. The second surface is Nunclon Delta surface coated with cell start. And the third surface is the Nunclon Supra surface, which is of course not coated with any ECM. So after growing our cells, these three types of cells on these surfaces, we did certain downstream experiments. So we checked for the morphology of the cells. How do they look like once they are grown on these surfaces? What is the doubling time and the viability of the cells? Uh, we also did the phenotypic characterization. So if you are growing the cells on a regular surface with ECM coating, what is the expression of surface marker? That we compared with the cells grown on supra surface. And lastly, we assessed the differential potential of these cells. So if there is any change in the differential potential, when the cells are grown on supra surface in the absence of ECM. So let's take a look at the results. So on your left, you can see the morphology of all the three cell types we have taken. So on the extreme left, in the absence of ECM, because the media does not contain any FPS, the cells could not survive. In the middle panel, you can see wherein ECM coating was done in the presence of media without FPS, cells could thrive properly. And finally, on Nunclon Supra surface, where there was no ECM coating done and the media which was used did not have FPS in it, the cells could proliferate nicely. So the morphology on Delta with ECM coating, it looked exactly similar to the supra surface wherein there was no coating involved. On the right, you would see the doubling time of the cells grown on uh, delta surface with ECM coating versus supra surface. And as you can see here, there wasn't a significant difference between the doubling time of the cells grown on these two surfaces. We also checked for the cell viability of the cells uh, grown on these surfaces. And in all the cases, the viability was above 95%. So this particular set of data told us that the MSCs can be grown properly on Nunclon Supra surface and uh, their morphology and cell health is preserved on this surface. So in the next experiment, we wanted to check the expression of surface markers on the cells taken from supra surface versus delta surface, which was coated with ECM. And as you can see here, the expression of CD73, CD90, 105, and 44 was similar in both the cases. So basically this experiment proved that the, when the cells are grown on supra surface, the expression of the surface marker remains unchanged. So the data which you are seeing here is from BMMSCs but we have done the same experiment for ADSCs and WGMSCs, and the results were similar. So the final experiment we did was to check for the differentiation potential of the cells taken out from supra surface as compared to the cells which were grown on delta coated with ECM coating. So as you can see here, when the cells were stained or the lipid droplets were stained using oil red O, in all the three cases for ADSCs, WJ, and BMMSCs, the results were similar. So ideally, if you are growing your cells on supra surface without any ECM coating, the adipogenesis differentiation is not getting hampered and you are getting a good amount of differentiation as you would get when you grow your cells on an ECM coated surface. Same way we did osteogenesis. 
so for the difference uh, so for the visualization part we we have we have used elizir and red in order to stain the calcium deposits and as you can see here for all the three types of mscs the results are similar in case of supra and delta surface and finally for chondrogenesis we have used asian blue to stain mucin and as you can see here for adscs wgmscs and bmmscs the results are comparable so overall our results shows that that nunclon supra surface it supports the growth of mscs under serum free condition it eliminates the need of any biological coating for the cell attachment and we are maintaining morphology growth kinetics phenotypic characteristics and differentiation potential of the cells when cells are being grown on nunclon supra so growing your mscs on this particular surface would help you to provide consistent results and would also uh, provide a smooth transition into clinical research application while maintaining high quality cells efficacy of cell therapy is not only based upon the cell quality and phenotypes of the cells but also on transplantation methodology and researchers are using scaffold free cell sheets these days in order to enable viable cell grafting at the host site so there are multiple scaffold free cell systems available so there are ph responsive surfaces there are magnetic responsive surfaces photo responsive surfaces thermo responsive surfaces etc and this, in this talk we are going to focus on thermo responsive surface so like i mentioned for formation of cell sheet and for the harvesting purpose thermo fisher offers a specialized surface called nunclon upcell surface and why this is a thermo responsive surface or a temperature responsive surface because for this surface we have a special coating of a temperature responsive polymer so on a regular polystyrene surface this polymer is first being coated and this polymer has certain properties so at 37 degrees this polymer allows the attached cells to get attached so you basically seed your cells on this surface and once you keep it in, in the incubator at 37 degrees your cells will attach but once you move it to room temperature or around temperature 20 to 22 degrees celsius the the polymer it binds water and swells which allows the cells to release from the the surface so just by keeping the dish or the surface outside you can allow your cells to dissociate you need not to add any kind of uh, dissociation reagent to your uh, to to your surface to dissociate the cells so in this video you can see how at 37 degrees the cells are attached and once the temperature is reduced the cells tends to dissociate from the surface okay so let's understand what a cell sheet is so a cell sheet comprises of uniformly distributed confluent cells with preserved cell to cell junctions and ecm proteins researchers these days are using cell sheets for various purposes so if we talk particularly about mesenchymal stromal cells uh the sheets formed using uh, these cells have been used for bone and cartilage regenerations there are multiple studies wherein in a, uh, in different animal models they have been used for uh cardiac injuries and then there are multiple uh research papers wherein you will find the application of these hmsc sheets for tissue repair regeneration as well as wound healing okay so how to fabricate a cell sheet 
So how to use upsell surface in order to, to make a sheet of any kind? So first of all, we have to start with a confluent cell culture. We have to seed ourselves in a way that after a certain period of time, we get a fully confluent, uh, confluent layer of cells on that surface in such a way that there is a tight junction between uh, these cells and uh, which would help them like to become loose. And then this sheet can be harvested using a supportive membrane. So the entire procedure, I'll explain you in the next slide. So to begin with, we are first supposed to seed the cells onto the surface. So this particular surface is available in multiple formats. You can get 35 mm dish, 100 mm dish, and a 60 mm dish. We also have six well plates for the same. Along with the product, you will also get a supportive membrane for the transferring of the sheets. So first, what you'll do is you will seed your cells onto the surface. Once the cells are confluent, you'll keep them at room temperature. So, at, uh, so once they'll start to get uh, loosen up because of the room temperature, you will put your uh, shifter, uh, like the supporting membrane, or we call it as cell shifter on the, on this layer of cells. Then after some time, you will just peel it off. So what will happen is along with the cell shifter or the supporting membrane, the layer of cells will also come off. So as you can see in the last uh, illustration, uh, below the dark green ones are the cells and on the top, you can see the cell shifter. And this, uh, and this uh, sheet can be transferred to the host surface. I'll just play a video to, uh, to give you a quick uh, glance on how it is done. So there's a dish. You remove the media first. You keep it at room temperature. Put the cell shifter on. You peel it off. And then you transfer it to the host surface. And then finally, you put some media on top and then remove or peel off the cell shifter or the supporting membrane. So like this, the cell sheet, which we have grown on the upsell surface, can be transferred to the host surface. OK, so Thermo Fisher offers a specialized surface called NUNC upsell surface, which is a temperature responsive surface, which helps in the fabrication of cell sheets. So this particular surface is coated with a specialized polymer, which is a temperature responsive polymer, which has a special property to allow the cells to attach at 37 degrees Celsius. And once you keep the surface outside at room temperature at around 20 to 22 degrees, the, uh, uh, the, the polymer allows the cells to dissociate from it. You need not to add any trypsin or any other dissociation reagents to dissociate your cells, but just by the reduction of temperature, you can take off your cells. So along with the cells, the ECM also comes. So as you can see here, at 37 degrees, the cells were attached. And once the temperature is reduced, the cells will dissociate along with their ECM. To show how to fabricate and harvest cell sheet using upsell surface, the data you see here is from WJ MSCs. So what we have done is we have first seeded WJ MSCs on the upsell surface. We grew them until they reached a certain confluence level. Then we kept the sheet at room temperature for them to dissociate from the surface automatically. We then overlaid cell shifter on top of it. And then, as you can see here in the third picture, all the cells got attached to the cell shifter and nothing was left at the bottom. These cells were then transferred to the host surface where they got attached because of the ECM protein which still remains intact, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And once these cells were transferred, they were characterized using different antibodies and uh, live dead uh, stains in order to confirm their viability. Okay. To ensure whether the sheet which we have transferred is live or not, we stained them using live and dead stain. 
And as you can see here, the green cells are all live cells. And then there were few red cells which were dead. So this particular uh, result showed that the cells which we have transferred or the sheet which we have transferred, they are all live. In order to see for the expression of ECM proteins, we stained them using collagen 1A antibody and fibronectin antibodies. So as you can see here, the expression of collagen A and fibronectin is there in the uh, transferred sheet. So we also uh, did um, phalloidin staining of the cell sheet. And here is the data. Now on the right, you would see a triple layer sheet. So once you form a single sheet using the upcell surface, you can use it to stack it up. So what we have done here is we made three separate sheets using the upcell surface and then layered them on top of each other. And prior to which we have stained them with a cell tracker. So green, red, and blue. So these three colors which you are seeing are from the cell tracker and you can layer them up and after cross-sectional, after cross-sectioning them, you can view them like this. So in the same manner, you can stack as many sheets as you want, depending upon the experiment, and you can transfer it to the host surface for your, uh, for your purpose. So overall, upcell surface can be used to fabricate cell sheets, which can be targeted on the damaged area, and they can be used for repair and regeneration research. And the harvested cell sheet, as I showed in the data, it preserves ECM, cell-to-cell -cell junction, and cell ECM junctions, which are very important for an effective cell therapy. Like I mentioned, we do not need any dissociation enzymes for harvesting the cells. So we ultimately preserves the cell viability and the surface marker expression. So, so, for an efficient culturing of MSCs for cell therapy research, Thermo Fisher provides you a number of products. We have media for you, which is serum and xenofree. We have different plastic surfaces like supra surface, upcell surface, delta surface, and many more. Also, we have mesenchymal stromal cells in our portfolio, which would help to <clears throat> which would help in your uh, cell therapy research. If you want to know more about our products, you can explore our website www.thermofisher.com and explore all the products available for cell therapy research. It has been a pleasure delivering this talk. Please reach out to us for any questions and queries. We'll be glad to help you out. Thank you.